The big story at four, the family of Sonia Massey is demanding justice one day after video showing her being shot by police. If for the video, no one would know the truth. She was not only shot by law enforcement, then tried to cover it up. They told the doctor at uh, the hospital that she committed suicide first. But they, they called me, the hospital told me that someone just shot her, so they just telling everybody different stories. We're gonna get justice for sure. Yes, sir. You killed the wrong black woman this time. Amen. Amen. He should have never had a badge. He should have never had a gun. He should have never been given the opportunity to kill my child. Tragic slaying sparks outrage. This week's headlines are buzzing with outrage over a shocking police incident in Springfield, Illinois. The drama unfolded when body camera footage from two weeks ago surfaced, showing a white officer fatally slaying Sonia Massey, an unarmed black woman. This has sparked a nationwide uproar, with prominent figures like attorney Ben Crump, famous for fighting on behalf of victims of police brutality, calling out the tragedy. She needed a helping hand, Crump said at a press conference, not a bullet to the face. So who was Sonia Massey? The 36-year-old mom of two was a cherished member of her community in the Cabbage Patch neighborhood. Her father, James Wilburn, lovingly describes her as a daddy's girl who never ended a conversation without saying, Daddy, I love you. According to her obituary, she was a devoted member of Second Timothy Baptist Church and had a passion for hairstyling and family time. Crump also mentioned that Massey struggled with mental health issues. The nightmare began on July 6, 2024, when Massey called 911 to report a possible prowler at her home. When deputies arrived, things quickly escalated from a seemingly routine check. Massey was in her kitchen, dealing with a pot of boiling water, when deputy Sean Grayson made a threatening remark. You better f not, or I swear to God, I'll f shoot you in the fucking face, he said, pointing his arm at her. In the chaos, Massey was told to drop the pot, and moments later, shots rang out. Grayson later claimed that Massey came at me with boiling water. Grayson's history doesn't paint him in the best light. He has been a part of several law enforcement agencies in Illinois, had two DUI convictions, and was even discharged from the Army for serious misconduct. And get this, he didn't turn on his body camera until after the slaying. When he did, he was heard dismissing the need for medical aid and derogatorily referring to Massey. In response to the incident, Grayson was fired and indicted on three counts of first-degree slaying. The Sangamon County Sheriff's Office acknowledged that his actions were not in accordance with our standards. High-profile figures are weighing in as well. Vice President Kamala Harris and President Joe Biden have both condemned the slaying. Harris called it a tragic failure of the justice system, while Biden stressed that Massey's demise is a stark reminder of the inequalities faced by black Americans. He also urged Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. This case is igniting intense debate about police conduct and accountability, and the fallout is far from over. Well, how do you down here? You know, I need to tell you. Please, behind you. Oh, it hurts you. You called us. Okay. Bring emails now. We got a headshot wound to the female. Headshot wound to the female. 1078. Yes, sir. You killed the wrong black woman this time. Amen. Amen. He should have never had a badge. He should have never had a gun. He should have never been given the opportunity to kill my child. We've been informed that now DOJ is opening an investigation, the Department of Justice. They were saying it was self-inflicted initially or it was some intruder. Sean Grayson's troubling background. Sean Grayson, the Illinois deputy who fatally shot Sonia Massey, has a troubling history now coming to light. Documents obtained by ABC News reveal that Grayson, a former Sangamon County Sheriff's deputy, was discharged from the U.S. Army in February 2016 for misconduct serious offense. He served just under two years in the Army before leaving with the rank of Private First Class, but specific details about his misconduct remain classified under the Privacy Act protections. Grayson's record shows a pattern of problematic behavior beyond his military service. He was charged with two DUI offenses in Macoupin County, Illinois in 2015 and 2016, both of which he pleaded guilty to. The 2015 incident led to over $1,300 in fines and vehicle impoundment, while the 2016 charge 
resulted in more than $2,400 in fines. His policing career included part-time roles at the Pawnee, Kincaid, and Verdon Police Departments and full-time positions at the Auburn Police Department, Logan County Sheriff's Office, and finally, the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office. Grayson's frequent job changes and various disciplinary issues raise questions about how thoroughly his background was vetted by these agencies. The Sangamon County Sheriff's Office terminated Grayson following the fatally slaying of Massey. The department stated that Grayson did not act as trained or in accordance with our standards. In the footage released from the incident, Grayson can be seen threatening Massey with his weapon before fatally slaying her, which the Illinois State Police Review concluded was unjustified. Grayson, who has pleaded not guilty to charges of first-degree slaying, aggravated battery with a firearm and official misconduct, is currently facing significant scrutiny over his law enforcement career and personal conduct. The revelations about his past, combined with the ongoing investigation into Massey's demise, have intensified calls for greater accountability and oversight within police departments. Kamala Harris Demands Justice Vice President Kamala Harris has been particularly vocal. She took to the podium on Tuesday to address the tragedy, emphasizing that Massey deserved to be safe and condemning the police response that led to her demise. In her statement, Harris didn't just condemn the incident, but also highlighted the need for systemic change. She joined President Biden in urging Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act, a piece of legislation she co-authored aimed at reforming police practices. In this moment, in honor of Sonia's memory, Harris said, we must come together to achieve meaningful reforms that advance the safety of all communities. Harris's call for action reflects her broader commitment to addressing racial disparities and ensuring police accountability. She stressed that the footage and the case underscore the urgent need for reform to prevent such tragedies in the future. As Harris and Biden call for legislative action, Illinois Senators Tammy Duckworth and Dick Durbin also weighed in, condemning the slaying and calling for justice. Duckworth expressed that Massey's trust in law enforcement should not have cost her life, while Durbin described the footage as disturbing and unconscionable. Families' Allegations Against Police Shocking audio obtained by The Guardian reveals that right after the sling, someone on the scene suggested Massey's wound was self-inflicted. A dispatcher confirmed this troubling claim, even as Massey's family says they were misled with various false narratives, including that she had either taken her own life or was slayed by an intruder. Jimmy Crawford Jr., Massey's ex-partner and father of her child, expressed his frustration, noting that law enforcement even told hospital staff that Massey had slayed herself. How do you get that confused? Crawford Jr. questioned. The truth only came to light after a doctor determined that Massey's demise was a homicide. Not until then did authorities begin classifying the incident as a police sling. For some family members, the shocking details of who was responsible only emerged from news reports. Malachi, what was your mom like? She was just a ball of love, honestly, to me. Who was Sonia Massey for people who don't know her? She was very smart, helping everybody but herself. Was a homebody and a good mom. She cooked me the best food. I love her food. She was just a ball of energy. Does it feel like she's gone? No. This is feeling surreal to me right now. I think it was from that, but she would always tell me that if she did pass, just be strong. I don't know how this could be real. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Civil rights attorney Ben Crump, who represents Massey's family, revealed that the Department of Justice has launched an investigation into the case. The DOJ responded to inquiries by stating they are aware of and assessing the circumstances surrounding the tragedy and will keep an eye on the criminal proceedings led by the Sangamon County State's Attorney's Office. Crump drew a comparison to the Laquan McDonald case in Chicago, where police fought to suppress video evidence of McDonald's fatal slaying. He voiced concerns about potential cover-ups, emphasizing how crucial the body camera footage was in this case. Just imagine if there wasn't a video, what the narrative would have been, Crump remarked. The controversy extends to the employment history of Deputy Sean Grayson, who had worked at six different law enforcement agencies since 2020 and had two DUI convictions. 
Crump and Massey's family question whether Grayson should have even been on the force. They're also pushing for Sangamon County Sheriff Jack Campbell to step down immediately, echoing the family's demands for accountability and reform. At a press conference, Crump revealed that the family has discussed with Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker the possibility of new legislation targeting problematic officers like Grayson. This ongoing case underscores the need for greater transparency and accountability in policing. Loving Mother and Community Pillar And then the message got to the hospital that it was a self-inflicted uh, injury. I once was out told that the officer did it. They tried to make me believe that it was a neighbor or somebody that did it. I'm calling for the sheriff's resignation because I think it's a culture to treat this family this bad. If it were not for that camera footage, they would have lied and they'd, they'd have lied their way right out of this. He needs to resign. Despite the storm of controversy surrounding Sonia Massey's tragic demise, her family is taking a moment to honor her memory. At a recent NAACP news conference, they opened up about who Sonia truly was beyond the heartbreaking headlines. Sonia was a loving mother of two, a daughter to Donna Massey and James Wilburn, and had three siblings. Her oldest son, Malachi Hill, reflected on his mother with touching memories. She was loving, caring, and she knew how to cook. I loved her cooking, best cooking ever, not going to lie, he shared. Malachi described Sonia as a vibrant, energetic person who could strike up a conversation with anyone. We'd go anywhere, and if she wanted to talk to someone, she would, he said. She was just a lovable person. She always helped people, too. Malachi admitted that the pain from his mother's demise is so overwhelming, he can't bring himself to watch the rest of the body camera footage from the incident. Senator Doris Turner, who had been a neighbor and friend to the Massey family, also spoke at the conference. Her personal connection to the family added another layer of depth to the emotional tributes being shared. As the investigation continues and more details emerge, the Massey family remains focused on remembering Sonia for the loving and generous person she was, rather than just the tragic circumstances of her demise. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you next time.